So from here, I'm going to go to my projects, which is these three points with lines between them that looks like a share button from what you would find on a website. So I'm going to click on that, and you can see my two projects here. I'm going to click on this one. So I'm going to select that. When you're creating one, you have basically a video, and that video links to other videos. That's really all Interactor is. You have one video, you put clickable buttons on it at some stage of the video. One of the buttons, you know, when you click on it, it's a continuation of that same video. So it doesn't go anywhere, right? It just stays in that same video. Another button could be to this video that I call Rubric 1. A third button could be to this video that I call Rubric 2. And another button could be to this video that I call Q&A to allow the viewers to come back and view other ones if they change their mind, want to come back and look at other options. And then at the end of each video, I provide additional buttons where if they click on them, they can go to any one of these. So that's the, the basic concept. So when I click on one, what you see here is the video. This was a Zoom meeting that I had. At a certain point in the video, I had introduced the different topics that I was going to address that day. And at that point, I put in buttons. I used just a regular button. Here are the buttons over here. And here are other things you can do. Pretty much all of these things can be just done from a button, though. You can make buttons hyperlinked, or you could just make them like this menu button here. This menu is not clickable. Yes, it shows like it's clickable, but it's not. It's just basically a header so that people can see what these buttons are and the instructions on what to do. And these are the buttons telling you, you know, online course review process. That means the video continues, just like I described. Uh, there's that rubric one that takes you to that first video. There's rubric two, which is the second video, and the course review or open Q&A, which is the last video. And again, if they watch all the way to the end, I have additional buttons so that they can navigate to the other videos. So I'm going to go ahead and go back. There's a back button on the top left here. I'll go to rubric one. And it's the same concept. Now, I don't have buttons in the beginning because they've already made a selection from a menu, so there's no reason to have an additional menu here. But at the end of the video, I have buttons again. And those buttons are hyperlinked to take the viewer to the other videos. And each one of those videos has buttons like this, allows them to navigate. I'm going to click this one just so you can see. Now, this isn't a preview, so you're not going to, it's not going to take me to the video. It's going to take me to the button and its parameters. So you can see what what am I asking to happen when the buttons are shown? Because I can have the video continue to play while the buttons appear, but I've chosen to have the video pause. And then what I want happen when they click? Well, I could have nothing happen. That's what I did with the menu button that you saw in the beginning it was just a header, so I didn't want anything to happen when anybody clicked on it. Play node, that means play the video that I brought into the pathway. Open URL, so it could be, you know, sending them to a page inside canvas or some other website skip to a time so it could be skipped to a time in the same video let's say these are introductory buttons it could be a menu and so i want them to go to chapter one in this video chapter two in this video chapter three in this video the button will allow the viewers to skip to chapter one chapter two or chapter three similarly i can have it unpause the video and that's what i did with the first video in these groups of videos the name is just to differentiate each video from the rest of the videos. Grouping, you know, you could group them together. There was no need because I only have four videos, so there's no reason to create groups. I didn't do anything excessively complex. Vertical position, horizontal position, height, width, etc. I don't really worry about that because I'm dragging, dropping, and using these arrows to pull out the length of the buttons. I don't worry too badly about that. Let me go ahead and... It does stick a little bit, as you can see, so let me go ahead and undo that um, and re-drag it there. So appearance, I can change the color of the buttons. That's how I chose to differentiate the different buttons. Roundness, you can affect the roundness of the buttons. You can see, make it more round, less round. Letter spacing, you can increase the spacing of the letters, decrease the spacing of the letters. 
Timeline. I do use the timeline pretty actively because when I want the buttons to appear, I want all the buttons to appear at the exact same time. I write down on a sheet of paper what time the first button appears and what time this, the, the button disappears. And then I make sure that I type in those same times for each additional button that I put in there. That way there's a synchronous appearing and disappearing of the buttons. You can copy a button. The button will just reappear and then you can drag it below and then you can retitle it and adjust what it does here in the button's parameters. And then you can preview. So since the buttons are at the end, and this is your way of making sure that everything appears simultaneously and that it's clickable. So I'll click it well, and I'll go back. So you have your media library. These are the videos that you upload in there. So you can drag the videos into your media library. You can also interconnect YouTube videos. So let's say you have a TED Talk, but you want to create a menu inside the TED Talk that allows the students to navigate to different points and then maybe have them answer questions at certain segment of the TED Talk. Or maybe you want to have different videos where if they, depending on how they answer on certain questions, they go to different videos. It's a way of creating a more interactive experience with videos and it is really easy it is not time consuming whatsoever there's a little learning curve in just getting used to what are all the different features in it and trying to remember things like to type in the timing of the buttons and when they all appear and disappear so that they appear and disappear at the same time which the more you do it the easier it'll become you know i want to remind you i've only done this twice but it was really easy to do it was fast the first time and it got even faster the second time, and I imagine it'll get even faster the third time.